Good morning, everybody. It's Wednesday morning. We're still here. But I think the ferry's gonna go today. It's not snowing anymore. And I don't think we'll have a problem boarding and getting moving. Good morning, everybody. I'm still in York Factory, First Nation, Manitoba, in northern Manitoba. It's been stranded here since Monday due to a snowstorm. Uh, the only way to get to this community is by ferry in the summertime or fall time. Once the ice freezes over, they have an ice road that leads here. But uh, for now, I rely on the ferry. And just as I got here, it started to snow. And then I delivered my product. I had a bunch of household goods, like stoves, ovens, beds, mattresses and stuff. Delivered it here. They helped me unload and it was super quick. I rushed back to get to the ferry and by the time I got back here, the storm had started. They canceled the ferry Monday afternoon. We were hoping to get going Tuesday morning. Still storming. They postponed it to the afternoon. It was still storming. They canceled it all together for yesterday. Now it's Wednesday morning and everything looks like it's cleared up. It's still dark out, but uh, they're getting the ferry all warmed up over there, and I'm pretty sure they're going to load us up. So, uh, good news. I want to get moving. Once we get to the other side of the lake, there's still a 125-kilometer or 75-mile stretch of remote gravel road yet. That I don't know if it's been cleared. I'm hoping that it's passable and uh, clear so that I can get out of here, get to Thompson, and then from there we take Highway 6, which is thankfully paved all the way back down to Winnipeg. It's going to be an interesting day. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll talk to you once we're loading onto the ferry. Looks like boarding is beginning. They're going to put these cars on first and then I guess I'm going to come in last right in the middle. Such good news. I'm so glad. Today is a nice calm day. Look at that lake. It's almost like glass. So how many of us can they fit on here? I'm on a boat. There goes shore. Now I'm going to be honest with you guys. I didn't film boarding because I embarrassed myself a little bit and got stuck. So thank God that's all over. So this morning I got up, did my pre-trip on the truck, right? Made sure everything was running properly, air in the tires, all that stuff, you know. Then I thought of it, man, I've had my trailer brakes on for two days here and it's gotten cold. I better make sure that they're not locked up. So, okay, I'll go out to my trailer and I uh, check out the brakes. From what I could see, they're unlocked, right? I, I, I released the air in the trailer, trailer lifted up, brakes released. I could hear them go ka-dung, ka because they were a little bit frozen on, right? Well, apparently they were locked. And so I started going down the hill looking at my trailer and I was like okay I couldn't see the wheels in my mirror just yet and I don't got those yellow spokes that poke out right he said well the trailer's unlocked everything's coming with me good going down the hill and then I see the trailer start to skid towards the the ditch and away from the road because I was going onto the road the trailer was sort of staying behind I said oh no okay so I stopped right away pulled my tractor brakes and I was going to go back there release my trailer brakes got them unlocked get back in the truck 
by now I'm blocking access to the ferry. Most had gotten on already, but uh, the last guy behind me was waiting. I was the second last guy on. And uh, I'm blocking the whole ferry access. No one else can get on, right? So I get back in my truck and I'm stuck right there. Remember I told you, once I start going down, I can't stop or I'm gonna be stuck. I, ha I can't stop till I'm on the ferry. I'm empty and there's been a lot of, lot of snow. Well, I had to stop because my brakes were, were still frozen. And it boggled my mind because I went back there and checked and I felt them unlock. But uh, obviously I was wrong. It didn't go very far. It's, it happens, right? You, you look in your mirror, oh shoot, trailer didn't release. You, know, you go back there, you know, knock on them a little bit, get them to release, and then you continue going. But this time I'd sunk in right there and I was stuck blocking access. So they had to get the front end loader to come in from the airport <laughs> and just move my trailer over like two feet. That's all it needed. It just needed to be moved over two feet and then I could, he gave me a little push and I got onto the ferry. The whole ordeal delayed everything by about 15 minutes. And uh, <laughs> put me in the spotlight where I didn't want to be in the spotlight a little with everybody waiting for the ferry to go because everyone's been waiting for two days. And here comes Trucker Josh delaying things by another 15 minutes. So that was my morning. <laughs> Sweating a little bit. How was your morning? Going backwards this time. I really hope that I'm not gonna have problems driving off the ferry because no one can get off this ferry until I get off the ferry. And I'm feeling that at the ferry there, it's gonna be uphill, right? And I'm empty, I have no load in the box behind me. And if I can't make it up that hill, no one's getting off the ferry over there. Wish me luck.
empty trailer behind me, so I've got no weight on my drives. And just a trailer dragging me down. nervous getting off that ferry I thought I might get stuck but luckily this uh, this ramp here wasn't as steep as the one on the other side it was pretty much a level flat flat road right off hey eh? like you saw it there lucky for me so now we've got to try to get up this secluded remote gravel road which is now gonna be a snow road I guess once we get out of split lake and it's gonna be 125 kilometers or 75 miles of complete remote wilderness we gotta get through with no cell signal. So I've let work and family all know where I'm at, that everything is working, and then I'm about to head into this remote area so that, you know, if I don't get in touch with them again in a couple of hours, they know exactly where I am. Ooh, it's bumpy here. I forgot about this. Woo! Yeah! I don't want to slow down too much because I don't want to get stuck up these hills. You'd be surprised how easy a truck can get stuck pulling an empty van trailer. It's like dead weight behind me, right? It's rolling, yeah, but it's not pushing. I'm pulling it. So, uh... If I go up even the slightest hill and it's icy, I just spin out. And then I either gotta back up and take a running start at it, or I gotta chain up. And I'd really rather do anything other than chain up my tires, because that's a big pain in the butt. I really don't wanna deal with that today. I just wanna get out of here, I wanna go home. All right, everybody, 75 miles. In 100 meters, turn left on Highway 280. 75 miles to our uh, to our left. So now that we're on this road, just a few kilometers up, a few miles, and uh, the cell signal will drop out. And if anything happens, we break down, we hit the ditch. There's uh, continuing on this road for 126 kilometers. There's no way to call for help. And walking back might be a little dangerous, especially if it gets dark. But that won't be till this evening. Because you don't know what kind of wildlife is up here. I, don't, I wouldn't want to walk down this road by myself at night. I don't even know if it'd be smart to do during the day. I'm not from this region of my province, so I don't even know what the the dangers are. In, like I know what, like there's bears out here, there's wolves, coyotes. I don't know if they're a danger to humans here or what their population numbers are. But let's just focus on staying on the road and getting to Thompson and getting back to the paved road. I'll take you with me here down a little ways on this on this road. Under the snow it's gravel. This is as remote as it gets in Manitoba, I think.
don't want to wreck my suspension in my truck on all of these bumps. So I'm trying to go around as many of them as I can. It's hard to see them though because of the snow, everything's all white now. So we're doing 50 kilometers an hour, 35 miles an hour. It's going to take a long time to get down this road at this speed. Hopefully it smooths out a little bit. It seemed a little bit smoother closer to Thompson on the way up. Who knows how it is now. You sort of see up ahead there, there's a dark spot. You can tell that the, the vehicles have been hitting potholes there. And the gravel's being pulled up to the surface. I'm going to try to go around that a little bit. Right here. Okay, it wasn't so bad. It's going to be a long ride down this road. We're going to have to tighten everything up when we get back home. <laughs> Maybe when we get to Thompson. Man. You can't even see where the potholes are because everything's just so white right now, right? This is not something that I'm gonna subject Old Blue to again, I don't think, at least not very often. This is a little bit of a, a unique load that I took up here. I thought it'd be a fun experience. Well, it was an experience, one that I won't forget. Trying to go around these potholes. Got a vehicle coming here too. I don't wanna stop on this uphill. Doesn't look like much of a hill, but it's enough to get me stuck if I stop. And he's just giving her. You know, when you see vehicles from northern Manitoba and Winnipeg, they're always all filthy and beat up and like things fall hanging off of them. Now you know why. These are the roads they got to deal with. Like 75 kilometers of this just to get to the ferry and the ferry's two hours to get to their community yet. Can you imagine living that far away from everything? And Thompson's a small city. What, maybe 30,000, 20,000 people? Maybe? 10,000? Small city. To get all the way down to Winnipeg is a 10 and a half hour drive in good weather. After you get off the two hour ferry. Winnipeg would be the closest, you know, city to go to. Because if you go north that way, there's nothing. Well, there's Nunavut. There's 30,000 people living in Nunavut spread out. There's uh, but it's the tundra up that way. And then you go far enough north there, you, you go over the Arctic Ocean, you end up in northern Russia. So you, you don't want to go too far that way. I think sometimes we forget living in southern Canada that Russia is our northern neighbor. Right over there. They need some proper roads up here. Man, this is terrible. You're doing good, old blue. You're doing good. I'm trying to be nice to you. So I think what would be customary on this road, since there's no cell reception and no way to call for help, if you pass by somebody who's having trouble, you stop and help them. That just, uh, that's a given up here. You don't pass by anybody in trouble. And if they're stopped, you check to make sure they're okay. Maybe they're just stopping to, I don't know, maybe they're, they have kids with them and the kids are crying or someone had to go to the bathroom. But you always, you always stop and make sure everyone's okay up here. Because you might be, you might be the one that saves their life. You might be the only one passing by them, especially if it's at night. Though as far as I know, 911 will still work even when you don't have cell signal, which is strange. 
I guess it goes off of the satellites or something then, but you should be able to call 911 from here, but you know, I'm not gonna try and confirm that. There's still a chance that you can't get any help. And it gets really dark and cold at night. Really dark. We have a vehicle here. Uh, this one was here on the way up already. Okay, yeah, they, got, they put a cone by it so people don't hit it. Definitely been there a while. Someone's helped them out already. The road's gotten better. That's good. Still terrible, but it's not as terrible. All right, we're staying positive. It's all good. We're on our way home. Oh, there's a lake over there. Hey, hey! Anyone want to go do some fishing? It's kind of cold to go fishing today, I think. Maybe tomorrow. We made it. We're about to turn back onto the pavement. What a ride. What a ride. Okay, so there's a little pull out here right before we turned. I need to go and check Old Blue and make sure that everything is still there. That was a terrible, terrible road. Yikes. How you doing here, Old Blue? All lug nut covers and center covers there are all still in their place. Bumper still where it should be. This side's here all looking good. Yay, yay. All the tires are still here. That's good. I was worried with these center caps, you know. I need to replace them. Especially the ones on the front. I thought that all the vibra vibrating might have rattled them off, but nope. So looking back here. Oh yeah, here you go. I want those covered up. It's that time of year again, eh? All our lights always get all covered up. Oh, we survived. She's not even that dirty. It'll clear the taillights off at the back. Everything's looking good. joys of winter. There we go. Okay, well, I think we're good to continue. I'm gonna stop in Thompson here and fuel up again. Since there's snow on the ground, my rule for myself is I never, never let my tanks go below half tank in the winter time. And uh, if I go all the way back down south to Winnipeg, they'll be well below that by the time we get there. And I like to be prepared because we all saw <laughs> what happened to me the last couple of days. I got stranded up there, but because I was prepared, I was okay. I had a week's worth of food in the truck. So I had food. I had full tanks of fuel when I got there, so I had fuel. And I have well, three big 24 packs of water bottles. So I had uh, lots of water as well. As you can hear, got my cell signal back. We're out of the thick of it. I just let my wife know that I'm back to the pavement, that I'm out of the bush. She 
she says that she's glad I made it safely. And uh, I don't think I'm going to accept any more loads up this far north. At least not in this not in winter season. Old Blue isn't a winter road truck. I'm not taking it on the winter roads. They get very rough, as you saw there. That was a pretty good road. They get worse than that. So uh, we'll wait till next summer before we come back up here again, I think. Well, uh, <laughs> I didn't know it was going to snow already because down south we don't got snow yet, but weather's a little different up here. Look at that glorious road. Look at it. It's got some snow on it, but that's okay. That is pavement, and I'll take it. Come on, get on the pavement, Old Blue. Get on that pavement. Yeah. There you go. How's that feel? We'll get rid of the snow for you soon too, don't worry. Oh, look at this dip here. Oh, it'll suck you right in there. Yikes. got a lot of footage today. <laughs> Apparently this is the 42nd clip that I've filmed today. I don't even know I filmed that much. I probably didn't include most of it in the actual vlog itself, but there's gonna be a lot to go through tonight. This is the Pelican Landing in Grand Rapids, Manitoba. A little over halfway down, about halfway from Thompson down, a little more than halfway from where we were. Uh, 454 kilometers left. Yeah. Alright, I'm gonna drive the next couple of hours, get back to the yard, and I'll touch base with you there. I'm gonna go sort through all this footage. How did I take 42 clips from today? This is 43, isn't it? <laughs> 